All right, so went ahead and put in all of the boxes, the rest of the, and uh, laid out the other rooms. Of course, I explained to you about in most rooms, but this right here, this is the bathroom. In here, all you need, so as you come in the door, we've got a switch box here, which will control the lights. And then on either side of the vanity, we have a receptacle. Now, technically, we could have put just one in the middle, and that would have met code. But uh, I usually try like doing it this way, one for each sink, and I don't like putting them in the middle because it depends on what kind of um, you know mirror the owners may have that could be in the way. The other thing that we're going to do in here uh, is we're going to do vanity lighting for those because again it can depend somewhat on simply what it is that the homeowners pick out for mirrors. I will usually do just a loop uh, in that state inside the wall. And I believe that what they are wanting is going to be dual mirrors. That's what uh, the homeowner, he's told me he believes they're gonna have dual mirrors and they want lights on the sides and in the middle. So we'll just be doing loops for those for now, especially when it's like that, the light is very decorative, is usually gonna be more about eye level for the bottom of it. Um, so that you can see it because in that case it's you're really wanting to see the light It's a decorative feature verse as well as the lighting But you need the light just high enough to not interfere Then we enter into this toilet room in here according to the code wise All we would need is a switch to control the light and fan um, And he actually is asking for this is going to change out I'm going to change it to a two gang box because he wants the light and the fan to operate separately, which is fine uh, I'll just change that box out. We haven't ran the wire, so it's no big deal right now. Uh, this outlet here is for a bidet. Um, that's what they're wanting for their on on the toilets here. So uh, that outlet is there. Other than that, there is no code for there to be an outlet in there at all. The other area is a hallway right here. Um, this is another spot where it's different in here we do not need it every six feet or whatever as far as wall spacing goes all we need for the entire hallway is one outlet in the hall so we've put it here that's good midway it's generally simply designed set up for like plugging in a vacuum to clean the hallway or whatever um doing it there also because that's the double doors you know they might want to and the door opens this way so with it opening this way, putting like a shelf or something over there, I think it's going to be in the way if they ever wanted to do that. It'd be in the way for getting in that doorway because that original door to the kitchen is not centered. So putting a like a table there would kind of be an issue. But if they wanted to put one over here, there would be an outlet there. And so it would serve both the maintenance purpose and it would serve for that. Then we have simply, we got four-way switches. Those other boxes that you see, you can see one there and one up here. Those are four outlets out on the screened-in porch. The other thing that I did not mention in the last one when I was laying out inside this room here, uh, basically I ran all the 14.3 already, or at least most of it. There's still a few spots that we need to, um, and a lot of the overhead lighting and the ceiling fan box with 14.3 into it. But the other thing I did is this is for a smoke detector. Now you can use a round box, you can use a square box. I like using a square box because it helps designate it as a smoke detector. Uh, their bases are set up to build a mount to any either of those configurations. This helps designate so that people know this is a smoke detector, not a light. And it also there's more room inside these deeper square boxes than there, there is in the uh, four inch round. So that's another reason I like to use it. Two 14.3s, uh, the red wire is simply a communication between devices so that if one goes off, they all go off. And so there has to be one inside every bedroom, which there's already two in the original part down there, uh, two bedrooms. So there's actually three smoke detectors down there, one in each bedroom, one in the hallway adjacent. So the code for smoke detectors is you have to have one in every bedroom. Um, you know, near the door. So we got one there, and then in this bedroom, we have another one right here. The other codes are there has to be one in the hallway 
for adjacent to the bedrooms. Now, it does not have to be right next to each bedroom. It just needs to be in the hall. So if this entire hall has all the bedrooms on it, you only need one smoke detector in it. Another code is, is that you have a set of stairs, upstairs and downstairs. You have to have a smoke detector at the top of the stairs and at the bottom of the stairs. So since this stairwell is inside this same hall and we need one in the hallway, we also need one for the stairs. I went ahead and put the one in the hall right above the stairs right here. And then we have another one that's down below and at those stairs. So I do have those in there. Um, this bedroom, it's wired exactly the same. I mean, it's gonna be done exactly the same as the master bedroom. Uh, well, it's technically, they're calling it an office. Um, but it would be designated, as I say, real estate wise, it would be designated as a bedroom because there's a closet, but they're just spaced, uh, accordingly for that. I do not do the, uh, quads on either side of the window there. Um, in this run, uh, the bed could be set up over here, could be set up over there, but also that quad setup, um, if the homeowners wanted me to, I could do it, but there would be an extra charge for that. I usually only do that in the master bedroom suite because um, that's usually where they're going to have more stuff like that set up anyway. Um, closets are supposed to have a light, so there will be a light up here and a switch here. However, for those lights, I prefer to mount it on the back side of the header back here. Uh, so that it shines angled into the closet. It usually creates a better lighting than from overhead down. You put stuff up on the top shelf and then you block your light. This right here is a two gang box. It's a, it's a four way switch for the lights in the hall. And there'll also be a three way switch for the stairs because the code is that you have to have a, a switch to control the stair lighting at the top and at the bottom. So we'll be putting that in. But those are the codes. Um, as far as a kitchen goes, for the countertops in a kitchen, and we already have these outlets all in. We did this a while ago. But the, the code in here is very similar to the bedrooms, except for kitchens, it is a one-foot span. If there's a one-foot of countertop, there needs to be an outlet. So there'll be a small little cabinet here before the stove and there would have to be one on it because it will be over, a, it'll be one foot. Uh, and then the next code is, is that for every two foot of wall space, you have to have an outlet. And again, that's if it's, when it gets broken up um, by like a sink or a stove appliance, then it resets. Um, the, uh, again, that works just like the, uh, six foot in the bedrooms to where between this outlet measured along the wall and this one it can be four feet so that's two foot one way two foot the other way and gives you a total of four so and then we got the refrigerator over here so i think i think i may have shown that in another video but i'm not 100 percent sure um but i'm gonna go ahead and that might be it for this video because uh I think it ended up being pretty long just with the explanations of how you're supposed to space receptacles uh, by code. So um, with that being the case, oh, one other thing. So they, uh, you are supposed to have one on the front of the house outside and on the back of the house outside. Now, most people think that means that you put it up on the deck. That only is re that only counts. You know, usually we're going to put one on the deck. We are putting them on the deck up here simply as may, as uh, convenience. Um, most people are just going to want one on their deck. I mean, to plug something in. So we will be putting one up here on the deck. However, by code, that does not um, work for the outlet outside. The reason why is because it has to be able to be reached from ground level. And this is way too high for that. But we'll be putting one downstairs on the uh, exterior of the house going out through those big double doors with the two windows on either side. So there'll be one out there that will meet that criteria now that the back of the house has moved out farther. Um, the other code is, is that up in the attic, um, up through this opening here, we will be putting like a receptacle probably and switch in right around here on this stud. So the stairs are gonna go up this way, the pull down. So there'll be an outlet like there and there will be a light that we will be putting up somewhere in the middle up there. Now that code 
that code is actually only required if you have a mechanical um, device up there. Um, I will usually put one in anyway just uh, because there's storage space up there and it's again a convenience thing. However, it is only required to be um, if there is a mechanical, some form of mechanical equipment, whether it's a water heater or a uh, heating unit, in which there will be a heating unit up there. Uh, that, code requ that code requirement is uh, the same for a crawl space. Uh, you only have to put in a switch and light and a receptacle if there is a heater or a water heater down there. Um, so, but again, I will usually at least do one just for just for convenience. Um, so that's the code code requirements for the different spacings of different things. So, hope you all enjoyed watching, and we'll see you the next time.